In the relentless symphony of modern life, our minds often become instruments playing a discordant tune, the incessant melody of overthinking. We find ourselves replaying conversations at infinitum, anticipating outcomes with bated breath, and attempting to solve an endless string of what-ifs that dance mockingly across the stage of our consciousness. This mental dissonance is a shared human experience, a byproduct of our fast-paced world where information bombards us like a hailstorm, leaving our thoughts crowded and our peace disturbed. Yet, amidst this chaos, the timeless wisdom of Stoicism offers us a path to reclaim our mental serenity. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king of ancient Rome, reminds us, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This profound insight serves as the foundation upon which we shall construct our journey, exploring ten practical Stoic strategies to conquer the tyranny of overthinking and restore the harmonious equilibrium of a tranquil mind. Visualizing Overthinking as an External Force Overthinking often sneaks upon us like a dense fog rolling in on what was once a clear day. It starts as a single innocuous worry or idea, but quickly expands, enveloping our minds until we find ourselves knocked off our feet, disoriented and overcome. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher king, wisely observed, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This recognition leads us to our first technique, viewing overthinking as an external force. This approach is not about vilifying our thoughts or perceiving them as enemies. Rather, it is about acknowledging that these thoughts are not the core essence of who we are. They are invaders of our peace, trespassers upon the sanctum of our inner tranquility. Imagine these invasive thoughts as clouds passing over a majestic mountain. You are that mountain, immovable and steadfast, standing firm as the clouds drift by, their transient presence unable to diminish your grandeur. Stoicism teaches us to observe these thoughts without engaging or identifying with them. Visualize placing each intrusive notion into a bubble, watching it float away into the distance, its weight and impact diminishing with every passing moment. This mental exercise not only lessens the burden of overthinking but also reinforces the understanding that thoughts are transient, temporary visitors in the realm of our consciousness. They can only disrupt our peace if we choose to hold on to them, bestowing upon them a power they do not inherently possess. As you practice this visualization, a mental reflex gradually develops, enabling you to detach from these thoughts before they coalesce into a raging storm. By distinguishing yourself from the barrage of overthinking, you come to recognize that you are not merely the sum of your thoughts. This distinction acts as a shield akin to earplugs in a noisy crowd, allowing you to selectively filter out the unnecessary noise and preserve your inner sanctum of tranquility. It is a deliberate, continual effort that grows stronger with each day's application a testament to the indomitable human spirit's ability to reclaim its mental territory and restore its peace, one step at a time, shifting perspective from lack to abundance. Our minds can be treacherous companions, often luring us into a labyrinth of overthinking about what we lack, what could go wrong, or what remains yet to be achieved. This relentless loop can leave us feeling drained and discontent, overshadowing the countless blessings that already grace our lives. Seneca, the revered Stoic sage, once said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. 
This wisdom serves as a clarion call, beckoning us to shift our perspective from scarcity to abundance, from overthinking to gratitude. The practice of gratitude is a powerful force that pulls us from the ruts of our minds and plants us firmly in the fertile soil of the present moment, where life unfolds in all its vibrant splendor. To make this shift, begin by acknowledging three things for which you are grateful each day. These need not be grand gestures or monumental achievements. They need only be genuine expressions of appreciation for the simple pleasures that often go unnoticed amid the clamor of our worries. It could be the rich aroma of a freshly brewed cup of coffee, the comforting embrace of a favorite hoodie, or the warmth of a message from a dear friend. This simple yet profound practice pivots your mind away from the cyclone of overthinking and towards a profound sense of appreciation for what is already present in your life. By anchoring yourself in gratitude, you not only silence the noise of incessant rumination, but also enrich your daily experience, allowing the positive aspects of your existence to shine forth with renewed vibrancy. Gratitude acts as a magnifying glass, amplifying the countless blessings that surround us, blessings that our overthinking minds so often obscure. Over time, this new perspective can transform your inner dialogue from one of scarcity and want to one of abundance and fulfillment. This shift is not merely a momentary respite. It is the foundation upon which you can build a lasting sense of contentment a bulwark that will sustain you through the inevitable ebbs and flows that life brings. Embracing gratitude is not about donning rose-tinted glasses or denying the challenges that lie ahead. Rather, it is about recognizing and appreciating the good that already exists in your world. Using that appreciation as a source of strength and resilience to navigate life's obstacles with grace and equanimity. In this way, gratitude becomes not just a technique for conquering overthinking, but a way of being, a lens through which you can perceive the world with clarity and joy, creating a worry period, containing the chaos. It is a universal human experience to have worries nagging at the back of our minds, persistent like the hum of a refrigerator. Ever-present, sometimes barely noticeable, yet unmistakably audible. These concerns can hijack our thoughts at any hour, often when we are striving to concentrate on work, enjoy quality time with loved ones, or even when we are attempting to surrender to the restorative embrace of sleep. It is as if our minds have become a stage, and these worries are the uninvited actors who refuse to leave, disrupting the performance with their incessant presence. In the face of this challenge, the Stoic teacher Epictetus offers a poignant reminder. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. This quote may seem tangential, but it is a bold exhortation to prioritize our inner peace over succumbing to worry, even at the risk of appearing complacent or naive to others. Creating a designated worry period is a strategic means of giving these concerns their moment in the spotlight, but only during the encore, not the main act. Set aside a specific time each day, perhaps 20 minutes in the afternoon, when you are permitted to give these worries your undivided attention. During this designated period, dive headfirst into your anxieties, scrutinizing them, understanding their roots, and even jotting them down if it aids in processing them. Ask yourself probing questions. What is the true nature of your worry? How likely are these scenarios to unfold? What actions, if any, can you take to address these concerns? This focused session often reveals that many of our worries are akin to shadows, seemingly large and imposing, but ultimately lacking in substantial form when faced directly. Moreover, this process teaches your mind that there is a time and place for worry, and it is not all day, every day. When the worry period concludes, 
you consciously move on, having given your anxieties their allotted time and now choosing to set them aside. By compartmentalizing your worries in this manner, you regain control over your day, your thoughts, and your sense of well-being. The goal is not to eradicate worry entirely, for that is an impossible feat. Rather, it is to contain your worries, to reduce their impact on the broader tapestry of your life. This technique is akin to tidying a cluttered mental room, placing thoughts where they belong, and reveling in the tranquility of an ordered space. You will likely find that as you persist in this practice, worries begin to lose their power over you, for they are no longer permitted to roam freely, disrupting your peace at will. Life becomes lighter, more enjoyable, as you learn to grant your concerns their due consideration without allowing them to consume your every waking moment. In this way, the worry period becomes not a burden, but a liberating ritual, a means of reclaiming your mental sovereignty and embracing the present with a renewed sense of clarity and joy. Breaking down overwhelming thoughts into actionable steps. When the specters of overthinking descend upon us, it can feel as though we are carrying the weight of an enormous boulder, its mass rivaling that of the world itself. The sheer size of our worries seems to match the weight of our burdens, and we find ourselves pinned beneath the heavy cloud of our own thoughts, paralyzed and unable to move forward. This sensation is not unique to any individual, it is a shared human condition, exacerbated by a world that demands high performance in all aspects of life, work, relationships, personal growth, and social status. The pressure to excel can paralyze us with indecision and fear, leaving us mired in the quicksand of our own ruminations. Amidst this mental fog, Marcus Aurelius offers a guiding light. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This profound insight forms the bedrock of our fourth technique, transforming overwhelming thoughts into actionable steps. When your mind is racing with a monumental worry or a complex problem, the key is to slice it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. Ask yourself, what is the very next step I can take? Not the fifth or twentieth step down the line, but simply the next one. Acting upon this single, small step may seem trivial, but it is a potent antidote to overthinking. By focusing your energy on one concrete action, you redirect your mental resources away from worry and towards doing, away from paralysis and towards progress. This process is akin to untangling a giant knot by working on one small tangle at a time. You are not dismissing the complexity of your concerns. Rather, you are navigating through them with purpose and precision. The beauty of this technique lies in its simplicity and effectiveness. With each small step you take, momentum builds, and as you look back, you realize that the once formidable boulder of worry has been reduced to a mere pile of pebbles, crossed over one deliberate stride at a time. This method teaches patience, resilience and trust in one's ability to confront challenges head-on. What once seemed insurmountable now lies behind you, a testament to your perseverance and inner strength. Your overthinking has been replaced by a sense of accomplishment and clarity, a renewed confidence in your capacity to navigate even the most daunting of obstacles, one step at a time. Embracing impermanence, the art of letting go. Fours, let us face a sobering truth. Our minds often become entangled in a loop, rehashing events past or fretting over the future, yet to unfold. This is the playground of overthinking, where thoughts become sticky, lingering longer than welcome, overstaying their invitation in the realm of our consciousness. This challenge knows no discrimination. It affects students anxious about exams, professionals stressed over impending presentations, or anyone attempting to surrender to the embrace of slumber 
while their mind races at a hundred miles an hour. Amidst this mental marathon, we can find solace in the words of Epictetus, who reminds us, he who fears death will never do anything worthy of a man who is alive. While this quote may seem weighty at first glance, it speaks to the core concept of impermanence, a central tenet of Stoic philosophy. Everything changes, including the thoughts that seem so persistent in our minds when we overthink. When we overthink, we often cling to our thoughts as if they are permanent fixtures in our lives, immutable and unyielding. Embracing impermanence means understanding that thoughts come and go, ebb and flow, like the tides of the ocean. They are not eternal, nor are they meant to be. This realization can be a beacon of hope when we feel ensnared by the relentless cycle of overthinking. Practically speaking, embracing impermanence involves cultivating a habit of letting go. It is a form of mental decluttering where you consciously release the thoughts that no longer serve you, that add no value to your life's journey. You could envision this process as watching each thought drift away like a leaf upon the surface of a gently flowing river, or perhaps as clouds ever-changing, reshaping, and eventually moving on, making way for new formations. This visualization not only provides us immediate relief from the weight of overthinking, but also instills a deeper understanding that the nature of thought itself is one of constant flux and impermanence. By making this practice a part of your daily routine, you can transform your relationship with your thoughts, no longer perceiving them as burdens to be carried indefinitely, but rather as transient visitors. Welcome to stay for a time, but never meant to take up permanent residence. Letting go is not an act of surrender or resignation. It is an act of courage, a conscious choice to no longer allow redundant thoughts to occupy precious mental real estate rent-free. As you grow more adept at this skill, you will notice a newfound mental space, a quietude that was always present, simply obscured by the cacophony of incessant rumination. Embracing impermanence is more than a technique, it is a shift towards a more peaceful and present way of being. It is an acknowledgement that the only constant in life is change itself, and by accepting this truth, we free ourselves from the shackles of overthinking, opening ourselves to the boundless potential of each fleeting moment. Focusing on effort, not outcome, the true value of the journey. Overthinking is often the byproduct of our mind's intricate dance with the future, its outcomes, its what ifs, and its relentless exploration of the possibilities of failure and disappointment. This projection into the realm of potentiality can paralyze us with fear as we become consumed by the potential consequences of our actions rather than the actions themselves. We live in an outcome-driven society where the end is often perceived as justifying the means and this can lead us to believe that if the outcome is uncertain, the journey itself is not worth embarking upon. Yet a poignant quote from Epictetus, the revered Stoic philosopher, provides us with a clear directive. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Stoicism teaches us to focus on our efforts and intentions rather than the outcomes we cannot control. This is not to say that we should not set goals or aspire to achieve greatness. Rather, it means that the true value lies in the quality of our effort the integrity of our actions, and the virtue with which we navigate our path. To apply this transformative wisdom, whenever you find yourself overthinking about the potential results of your endeavors, consciously redirect your thoughts to the effort itself. Ask yourself probing questions. Am I doing my best? Am I acting with good intent? Am I staying true to my values and principles? This approach is about being fully present in the process, putting in the work, and understanding that this is where your responsibility lies, not in attempting to control that which is beyond your sphere of influence. 
This focus on effort can liberate us from the chains of overthinking, allowing us to be truly present in each moment, giving our all without the heavy shadow of what could be darkening our experience. It transforms our actions from mere steps towards an outcome into expressions of our character and commitment. With this shift in perspective, you will find that your path is not just a means to an end, but an embodiment of living with purpose, where each step is an accomplishment in and of itself, a testament to your resilience and dedication. Moreover, by relinquishing the need to obsess over outcomes, you free yourself from the shackles of external validation, for true fulfillment and satisfaction arise not from the destination, but from the journey itself. As you walk this path, you will discover a newfound sense of inner peace, a deep contentment that comes from knowing that you are giving your all, that you are living in alignment with your values, and that the rewards of your efforts extend far beyond any singular outcome. In this way, the stoic practice of focusing on effort becomes more than a mere technique. It is a way of life, a paradigm shift that redefines the very nature of success and accomplishment. It is a reminder that the true measure of a person lies not in the accolades they accumulate, but in the integrity with which they navigate the winding roads of their journey, embracing each step as a victory in its own right. Practicing voluntary discomfort, expanding your comfort zone. Our minds often lead us into a whirlpool of overthinking when faced with the prospect of discomfort or change. We play out scenarios over and over, attempting to predict every possible outcome, preparing ourselves for every conceivable discomfort that may arise. This mental rehearsal can be exhausting, draining our energy and leaving us feeling depleted before we have even begun. The comfort zone becomes a mental prison, where growth is stunted and overthinking becomes the warden, keeping us confined within the narrow boundaries of the familiar. Marcus Aurelius reminds us. The art of living is more like wrestling than dancing, reflecting the stoic practice of engaging with challenges head-on rather than avoiding them. By practicing voluntary discomfort, we can train our minds to handle uncertainty and reduce the grip of overthinking. It is about consciously choosing small actions that nudge us beyond the borders of our comfort zones, teaching us resilience and adaptability in the process. To integrate this transformative concept into modern life, start with something seemingly insignificant, yet subtly disruptive to your normal routine. It could be as simple as taking a cold shower, sleeping without a pillow, or walking instead of driving for short distances. The key is to embrace experiences that disrupt your habitual patterns and force you to sit with the feelings that arise without judgment or resistance. This exercise is not about punishment or self-deprivation. Rather, it is about demonstrating to yourself that discomfort is not as formidable as your overthinking mind would have you believe. By routinely stepping into the unfamiliar, the unknown becomes less daunting and your mind learns to quieten, becoming less reactive to change and more focused on what can be controlled, your responses. Voluntary discomfort has the paradoxical effect of increasing your comfort with the various aspects of life. As you persistently expose yourself to situations that challenge your boundaries, the unfamiliar becomes familiar, and your mental fortitude grows stronger, more resilient in the face of adversity. This powerful shift in perspective not only lessens the grip of overthinking, but also builds a core of inner strength that remains unshaken by the ebbs and flows of life's circumstances. You develop a newfound sense of confidence in your ability to adapt, to face challenges head-on, and to emerge victorious on the other side. As you continue to push the boundaries of your comfort zone, you will notice a gradual transformation taking place within you. The once daunting obstacles that triggered your overthinking will now be met with a sense of calm assurance, 
for you have proven to yourself time and time again that you possess the resilience and fortitude to navigate even the most challenging of circumstances. In this way, the practice of voluntary discomfort becomes not just a tool for conquering overthinking, but a catalyst for personal growth and self-mastery. It is a testament to the indomitable human spirit, a reminder that we are not defined by our circumstances, but by our ability to continually expand the horizons of our comfort zones, embracing discomfort as a gateway to greater self-awareness and inner strength. Reflecting on the transience of life, gaining perspective. When we find ourselves caught in the storm of overthinking, it is often because we have zoomed in too closely on the minute details of our lives, losing sight of the bigger picture. Our thoughts become a tangled web of what-ifs and worst-case scenarios, causing us to lose perspective and become consumed by concerns that, in the grand scheme of things, may hold little significance. This microscopic view can make even the most trivial issues appear insurmountable, consuming our mental space and draining our energy reserves. It is in these moments that we would do well to heed the wisdom of Seneca, who eloquently stated, We are not given a short life, but we make it short, and we are not ill-supplied, but wasteful of it. This poignant reminder encourages us to reflect on the fleeting nature of our existence, to recognize that each moment spent mired in overthinking is a moment not fully lived, a slice of life not savored to its fullest potential. Stoicism prompts us to ask ourselves whether the worries that consume our thoughts today will hold any weight in the grand timeline of our life's journey. To counteract the grip of overthinking then, we must regularly take a step back and consider our lives in their entirety. Recognize that many of the concerns that consume our mental bandwidth are transient, ephemeral, and in the long run, insignificant when compared to the breadth and depth of our experiences. When you feel overwhelmed by the cacophony of your thoughts, pause and remind yourself that life itself is fleeting, a precious and finite resource that should not be squandered on fruitless rumination. Ask yourself if this moment of overthinking is truly worthy of the limited time you have been granted, or if it would be better spent savoring the present, embracing the here and now with all its richness and vibrancy. This practice is not a call to become morose or indifferent to the challenges of life. Rather, it is an invitation to cherish the present moment and to focus your attention on what truly matters. It is a powerful antidote to overthinking because it aligns your consciousness with the present, enriching your appreciation for the now and diminishing the weight of future-focused anxieties. Let the ephemeral nature of life not be a source of dread or anxiety, but a canvas upon which you can paint with the vivid colors of presence and engaged living. Embrace each moment as a gift, a fleeting opportunity to experience the fullness of existence, unencumbered by the shackles of overthinking and regret. In this way, reflecting on the transience of life becomes not just a tool for conquering overthinking, but a gateway to a deeper, more profound understanding of what it means to truly live. It is a reminder to savor the journey, to find joy in the present, and to let go of that which does not serve the greater purpose of living a life imbued with meaning, purpose, and appreciation for the precious gift of existence itself. Seeking wisdom from outside yourself, the power of fresh perspectives. Our own minds can sometimes feel like a labyrinth, a maze, where each turn leads to more confusion and overthinking. We find ourselves trapped attempting to solve a puzzle only to discover that the pieces keep multiplying, leaving us feeling stuck and unable to find a clear path forward. This is the crux of the challenge posed by overthinking, a cycle that starts and ends within the confines of our own thoughts, often without a clear exit strategy or means of escape. It is in these moments that we would do well to heed the sage advice of Seneca, who declared, Consult your friend on everything, 
especially on those matters concerning yourself, for his counsel may then be useful where your own self-love might impair your judgment. These simple words encapsulate a profound truth that can help us navigate the stormy seas of overthinking. Seeking insight from outside ourselves can break the cycle of rumination and provide the fresh perspective we so desperately need. It could be the impartial advice of a trusted friend, the wisdom of a mentor who has walked a similar path, or the timeless insights found within the pages of great literature. The source matters not. What is crucial is the willingness to open ourselves to viewpoints beyond the echo chamber of our own minds. To apply this transformative wisdom in a modern context, identify individuals whose opinions you trust and respect, those whose perspectives have proven valuable in the past. It could be someone from your inner circle, a colleague whose counsel you value, or a professional with the experience and expertise to guide you through your particular challenges. The act of sharing your thoughts and concerns with these individuals can be liberating in two powerful ways. First, it provides clarity, as the process of articulating what weighs heavy on your mind can often shed new light on the nature of your struggles. Second, it opens the door for objective feedback, insights and perspectives that you may have missed while mired in the depths of your own overthinking. This technique does more than offer practical solutions. It reminds us that human connection is an invaluable resource when we find ourselves lost in the labyrinths of our minds. By sharing our burdens, we often find that they become lighter, more manageable, for we are no longer attempting to shoulder them alone. This is not a sign of weakness, but rather a recognition of the collective strength we possess as social beings. Let the wisdom of others be the light that guides you out of the shadows of overthinking, for in each conversation, each exchange of ideas and perspectives, you will find the puzzle becoming easier to solve, not because the problems themselves are any less complex, but because you are no longer trying to untangle them in isolation. Embrace the humility to seek counsel, to acknowledge that your own thoughts, while valid, may benefit from the insights of those who can offer a fresh vantage point. In doing so, you will not only expand your understanding of the challenges you face, but also cultivate deeper connections with those around you, fostering a sense of community and support that can sustain you through even the most daunting of mental battles. Seeking wisdom from outside yourself is more than a technique. It is an acknowledgement of the collective human experience, a recognition that we are all interconnected and that by drawing upon the knowledge and perspectives of others, we can transcend the limitations of our own individual minds and forge a path towards greater clarity, resilience and inner peace. Closing Thoughts Embracing the Path of Stoic Serenity In this exploration of practical Stoic strategies for conquering overthinking, we have embarked on a journey that has taken us from the depths of mental disquiet to the heights of inner tranquility. We have learned to reframe our perspectives, to embrace the impermanence of our thoughts, and to focus on the quality of our efforts rather than obsessing over outcomes beyond our control. We have fortified our minds through the practice of voluntary discomfort, expanding the boundaries of our comfort zones and cultivating a resilience that cannot be shaken by the vicissitudes of life. We have gained perspective by reflecting on the transience of our existence, using this awareness as a catalyst to cherish the present moment and let go of that which does not serve our highest good. Perhaps most importantly, we have learned to seek wisdom from beyond the confines of our own minds, recognizing that the collective experience of humanity holds invaluable insights and perspectives that can guide us through even the most daunting of labyrinths. As we stand at the culmination of this journey, let us not forget the words of Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king whose wisdom has illuminated our path. 
You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. These teachings are not mere platitudes. They are a clarion call to embrace our inherent power. To recognize that while we cannot control the world around us, we possess the ability to master the realm of our own thoughts, to cultivate a state of inner serenity that cannot be shaken by the storms of life. The strategies we have explored are not fleeting techniques, but enduring principles that can be woven into the tapestry of our daily lives, forming the foundation of a more mindful, present and purposeful existence. They are tools that can be honed and refined through consistent practice, each application serving to strengthen our mental fortitude and deepen our connection to the wisdom of the ancient Stoic sages. As we venture forth, let us carry these teachings with us, not as burdens to bear, but as beacons to guide our way, illuminating the path towards a life lived with intention, gratitude, and an unwavering commitment to cultivating the serenity that lies at the heart of the Stoic philosophy. For in embracing these principles, we not only conquer the tyranny of overthinking, but also unlock the door to a richer, more fulfilling existence. One in which we are truly present, engaged and alive in each moment, savoring the journey with all its complexities and wonders, unencumbered by the weight of relentless rumination. Let us persist on this path constantly seeking the wisdom that the Stoic masters have laid before us. For in doing so, we honor not only their legacy, but the boundless potential of the human spirit to transcend the limitations of the mind and to find peace, even amidst the ceaseless clamor of the world around us. So, I invite you, dear reader, to embrace this journey wholeheartedly, to embody the teachings we have explored and to share them with those around you. For in cultivating our own inner serenity, we not only enrich our own lives, but also contribute to the collective well-being of humanity, radiating a sense of calm and clarity that can ripple outward, touching the lives of countless others and inspiring them to embark on their own quest for stoic wisdom and mental tranquility. Together let us walk this path, steadfast in our determination to conquer overthinking and to live each day with the grace, resilience and equanimity that are the hallmarks of the Stoic way of being. For in doing so we honor not only ourselves, but the timeless legacy of those who came before us. Those who understood that true freedom lies not in the absence of challenges, but in the ability to navigate them with a mind unburdened by the weight of unnecessary rumination. The journey may be long and the road may wind, but with the wisdom of the ancients as our guide and the strength of our collective resolve, we shall emerge victorious, our minds liberated from the shackles of overthinking and our spirits soaring towards the limitless horizons of human potential.